Anyways, so Kong starts walking around seeing how these apes are led, and there was a scene where one of the apes are getting abused by the guards, and Kong helps that ape up, and just freaking one punch knocks that other ape and knocks the guard out. We get this really haunting scene where Scar King is walking out of his throne room. And despite Scar King not having any powers, he was actually menacing in this movie. He was actually really menacing. Nowhere near comparison to King Ghidorah. God damn it. How could I, how could I compete with a three-headed golden dragon? How in the world could I compete with that? Yeah, you're nowhere near on King Ghidorah's level. Fuck that, overgrown King Louie. Shut up, golden... You three-headed golden worm. I'll kick your ass after this review. Alright, both of you shut up. I'm trying to review a movie here. Anyways, so... Star King walks up to Kong and freaking sees the metal tooth and starts freaking laughing at his metal tooth. And Suko starts laughing, and Scar King flat out yells at Suko for bringing Kong into his domain. And one of the apes tries to defend Suko, and ends up getting killed in the process. And we get this fight scene between Scar King and Kong. And honestly, honestly, I can't help to get heavy Prince of Egypt vibes from this movie, because this movie reminds me of a lot of, pr of the Prince of Egypt. And Kanto 3 and Zilt doesn't also mention that to me a while ago, too. So, Kong overpowers Scar King after Scar King beats Kong when it comes to his speed and agility. And, of course... Um, Scar King releases Shimo, and we see that Scar King controls Shimo through pain. And she is forced to do his bidding. And she severely injures Kong's arm to the point where he can no longer use it. Kong leaves, leaves the, the battle. For once, Kong, has, Kong was in a fight that he cannot win. Yeah, I was just like, you know what? F that, I'm out of here. Uh. Really, dude? Really? Sorry. Anyways. So, Scar King sends his minions after freaking after Kong, and Scar King takes Kong's ass. Yeah, it took me three days to wash that thing. I don't smell that bad. You smell freaking horrendous, dude. Seriously, I'm part T-Rex, and you smell horrendous. Even though, um, despite me being all the way over here, I could smell them from all the way over here. What he said. So... So... Um, so, 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 Team Kong is wondering, how can Godzilla stop uh, Scar King and Shimo on his own, and of course, we it's revealed that, you know, that Godzilla won't be alone. It turns out that Kong wasn't meant to be the one that Dr. Andrews was preferring to, he won't be alone. Damn it! Apparently, Godzilla was supposed to team up with Mothra. And fun fact... Uh, Mothra, would you get over here? Yeah. I am not the same Mothra from King of the Monsters. I'm actually her mother. Her mother? Yeah. See? I look different. Oh, uh, yeah. That, and look at the comparisons to the movie. I'll have to look back at it. And apparently, Mothra will be only reawakened by Gia. Which, fun fact, 
Mongol was not supposed to be in the movie. Originally, Phosphora was going to be in the movie, but apparently, thanks to the test screening, people hated Phosphora so much that she was replaced by Mothra. Which I just can't help to wonder, what would make God go listen to Phosphora? I, I honestly don't know, actually, now that I think about it. What would make me you want to listen to that thing? Anyways, Kong and Suko make their way to the Iwi village, and of course, they all see that Kong is severely injured. And, well, they bring out the Beast Glove, and it turns out that the Beast Glove was actually made by the remains of Mechagodzilla, a.k.a. Mecha Kevin. I will murder you in your sleep, Kong. Help me. Um, anyway, so after that, Kong gets the Beast Glove, and Gia tells Kong that they need help. And of course, Kong makes his way to, to Egypt and calls Godzilla. Godzilla got, has gotten done consuming all Team Ass energy, and we get possibly the best looking designs of the MonsterVerse Godzilla, honestly. And, well, Godzilla. Well, it freaking jumps off the freaking mountain. And Gia is able to successfully wake up Mothra. And we get just a very pointless fight in the movie. Pointless? What do you mean? Like, what? Did you not hear what I said? It's pointless. Your fight with Kong in Egypt was pointless. Like, like, dude, again, you were saving up all that energy to fight Shimo, well, what people thought you were going to fight Shimo and Scar King. Like, like I said, you're wasting energy, dude. Plus... Kong, it was confirmed by Adam Wingard that Kong was holding back. So, and I don't like the idea of Godzilla being so damn aggressive. I, I don't like that idea. Like, I get it. He's protecting the balance of nature, but there's no reason for him to be this damn aggressive. Anyway, so after the pointless fight ends with Mothra saving, God, saving Kong, not Godzilla, and convinced Godzilla to let that he and Kong need to join forces to fight Chimo and Scar King. The human characters try to do the best they can to hold off Scar King and his army until Godzilla and Kong arrive. And of course, we get the epic chase, scene, the epic charge scene of Godzilla and Kong charging at Chimo and Scar King. The final battle in this movie was just way too short. And that's a prop and that's one of the main problems I have with this movie. But I'll get into that later. So the fight scene in the Hollow Earth ends and all the Kaiju make their way to Brazil. They have their final battle in Brazil. No. And Suko ends the fight by grabbing Kong's battle axe and destroying Shima's crystal. Scar King gets his ass beaten by Godzilla and Kong, and frozen by Shimo. Kong grabs the frozen Star King, slams him on the ground, and boom. Godzilla fires his atomic breath up in the sky by undoing Shimo's frostbite blast. And so... Godzilla makes his way back to uh, Rome Coliseum, and Gia stays with Dr. Andrews, and Kong with Suko and Shimo make their way back to the Hollow Earth. And boom, there you go. 
I honestly liked this movie. It was really good, but it was emotional, but not as emotional as minus one. But it was emotional enough where it can tell its own story. And there are some really funny moments, and I honestly liked it. But there are some problems that I have with this movie. The fight scenes in this movie are way too damn rushed, way too short, and the runtime of the movie, an hour and 53 minutes. The same runtime that the last movie had. And Godzilla was, had only at least 8 minutes of screen time in this movie. And some people are saying that he was used very fine. And to that I say, no he was not. He was not used that fine. He killed a kaiju, who wasn't even doing anything wrong, wrong, and killed a kaiju, who was loved by a lot of fans. And now, he's constantly hate mail for the rest of his life. <laughs> this is why Minus One is the real King of the Monsters, and not you. But, and... Honestly, I wish we got saw more of Scar King and Shimo. In the knowledge station, it confirms that Shimo was the one who froze the door and that she was kind of an alpha kaiju. But at the same time, it also confuses Shimo's age because she's rumored to be 3 million years old. She's like 3 million years old, and she started the Ice Age. But the problem is... The Ice Age started 3 billion years ago. So technically, Shimo should be 3 billion years old. Oh shit, you're right. Oh yeah, and the Knowledge Station confirms that uh, the worldwide government now wants to kill Shimo because of what happened in Brazil. God damn it! I just, I just got free from him! Don't worry, Shimo, me and my people will protect you. Yeah, yeah. Still, I just want to be free. I just want to live my life in peace. What is so wrong about that? Justice for Shimo. Hashtag justice for Shimo. This isn't fair. <laughs> but yeah, um, Mothra was just basically a supporting character. She didn't have that much of a role. That and making Godzilla's Mothra even more toxic than it already is. Wait, hold on, hold on. I just realized something. If that Mothra is the mother of Mothra from King of Monsters, and people still ship that Mothra with Godzilla, that means they can't ship GXK Mothra, because that Mothra is the mother of Mothra from King of Monsters, which means that they can't ship her. Her with Godzilla. Because King of Monsters Mothra is with Godzilla. Oh, yeah, you're right. They can't do that now. Aha! One victory point for us. Anyways, so in the end, God's Lord Kong, the new empire, despite its downfalls, it doesn't make me hate the movie. I still like it, and I still think it's the best version of the, the best movie of the MonsterVerse. Until the GXK sequel comes out and proves me wrong. So, in the end, I'm going to give Godzilla X Kong, The New Empire, a solid... with nine and a half, nine and a half Golden Godzilla stars out of ten. No, no, not nine and a half. Nine Golden Godzilla stars out of ten. So, stay tuned for my next review, which will be... Godzilla. Minus one. Hell yeah. Oh boy, the Oscar winner gets his chance to shine. What the hell, Doug?